to my channel, my name is Valesa and I'm the owner and creator of Alive Refurbish. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to tackle a wood sap problem, also known as bleed through, and how you can get away with leaving some of that beautiful natural wood exposed, even though your piece has significant damage. Like to learn more about that? Hang out with me for a little while. Do you know how they say not to judge a book by its cover? Well, I would say don't judge a piece of furniture for its facade. This mid-century modern stowaway chest is from the mid-1950s, is an original cavalier, and all the drawers are made of cedar and they have that ventilation for airflow. Since I have never seen one like it, I decided to buy it. And to give it more of a refreshed look, I'm gonna be stripping the current finish completely off. You're gonna need a spatula, a brush to apply the citrus strip. Make sure to protect your eyes and wear some gloves. Always follow the instructions given on each product that you are using. One tip I'm gonna give you for application is to be generous in the amount that you're applying. If you don't, whatever product you apply, it will end up drying and it won't remove the existing finish. And then you'll end up applying a lot more product anyway. The reason why I like to work with this chemical stripper is because it comes in a gel form, so it's thicker, it's not as runny as others, which makes it easier to work with, and the smell is not as strong as others. After 45 minutes, you'll notice how the existing finish is gonna look like it's crackling or separating. And that's when you know that it's ready to start scraping. Make sure to use a plastic spatula instead of a metal one because the chemicals on the stripper softens the wood. And if you use a metal one, you're running the risk of scraping the wood. And to wash off all the gunkiness that's left, we're going to be using these odorless mineral spirits with some still wool. I pour some of the mineral spirits in a container and start scrubbing. Make sure you follow the wood grain when you're scrubbing and also we're going to let this pit sit overnight to make sure the mineral spirits fumes evaporate. The reason why I decided to use the chemical stripper instead of sanding it is because I noticed that the wood veneer was already damaged and I didn't want to sand it too much because that might ruin my beautiful idea of leaving this wood natural. Which, as I was sanding it, I noticed that things were not sanding right. Something was off. There was oozing coming out of the wood and at this point my idea of leaving it natural is fading away. <laughs> but I kept moving on and hoping that I would keep it under control. I gave it a good wash with some TSP substitute that comes in a powder form. You dilute it in water and give everything a good clean. It took three rounds of cleaning to finally get the oozing under control. But finally stopped, which meant that I could partially leave some of the wood unpainted. But due to the damage that this piece had, I knew I had to partially be painted. And I let the damage sort of dictate what I was gonna paint and what painting design I chose for the piece. Before I even start priming this piece, I need to let it completely dry overnight. Now that my piece is fully dry, I can start addressing those small imperfections with some wood filler. This wood filler is stainable, and although I had stained wood filler to match the rest of the piece before, I'm afraid that some of these big chunks of wood veneer that are missing are located in highly visible areas, so it would be too obvious that there were repairs done. That is the reason why I decided to paint these specific parts of the dresser. Now that I sanded the repairs and wiped them, I can start priming with these Sensor Clear Shellac 
I apply a couple of coats and to my surprise there was a watermark that still was coming through and because of that I needed to paint the top of it which I was not planning on doing but when you're refinishing furniture you have to stay flexible or you will lose your mind <laughs> sometimes we just have to roll with it now that my clear shellac is all dry, I can give one last scuff sanding with my extra fine sanding paper. I am using my surf prep, but you don't need fancy machines to do this part. You can just use a sanding sheet. I do this for adhesion purposes so that my paint will have something to hang on to. The final wipe of all that dust I just created. And now I can finally start choosing a design for this piece. We'll see what we get. Just a quick reminder that I let the damage dictate what I was gonna paint and that is what I did. To create this fun design, I'm gonna be using only one mineral paint from Dixie Belle and a brush, nothing fancy. Both of the sides of these chests had some damage on different parts of them and on this side there was some damage in the bottom so that's why I chose to go for this triangular design. I did the same thing to the other side. Now that my paint is fully dry I can apply my top coat. I'm using high performance flat from general finishes but before I start applying it I'm gonna grab a tack cloth and start wiping my surface. Especially with dark paint colors, you're gonna see any dust, any speckle is gonna be noticeable and you really don't wanna apply your top coat over it. And to make sure that my piece is fully protected, I'm applying three coats. And here it is. You can see the natural wood peeking through. You can see that little bit of design that was given with the power of paint. And this piece is ready to find a new home. Well-constructed pieces are hard to find. And if you do, they come with a high price tag. So what a way to save a piece from the landfill. Furnish your home with a well-constructed piece. They are pieces from yesterday for today's home. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you feel inspired and learned something new. Remember to subscribe and have the notifications bell turned on so that you don't miss out on what I do next. Don't forget that just like there's hope for these pieces of furniture, no how tough things get in life, there's always hope for you too. Until next time.